Today we're going to learn about the solids of revolution. Let's say we have to compute the volume of from x equals 0 to x equals 7 of the solid created when y equals 5x is revolved around the x-axis. So let's draw this out first. So let's just redraw, or let's just draw the xy plane. So this is the y-axis. and this would be the x-axis. Now y equals 5x would look something like this, where it has a slope of 5 and it's going through the origin. Now in this problem we're only looking from x equals 0 to x equals 7. So let's say that this is where x equals 7 is. So if this is where x equals 7 and we can erase this part so we're looking just at from the origin to the x equals 7 point which is about right here so we're just looking at this little segment here now the problem is asking to compute the volume um, when this line this line segment is revolved around the x-axis so now let's redraw another way so let's say that we're looking at it from this angle, where this once again is the y-axis, but instead of staring at like bird's eye view, we're looking from this side, so we're looking from the point of view of the x-axis. So if we, and this would be like the x-axis or something, so or let's say this is where y is equal to 0. So right now we're looking like this, if we just flip the x-axis like this, so we're looking straight down the x-axis, we won't be able to see it, but we know where y is equal to 0. So, what we predict to happen when we revolve this is we will form a cone-like figure. So, the radius of the cone will be whatever f of 7 is, because this point here is 7 comma f of 7. which would be when you plug 7 into 5 at, or 7 into this function here you would get 35 so it, you would get a radius of 35 and so you would get something like a circle where the radius of the circle and this is just the base where the radius of the circle is 35 and if we draw this horizontally, we would get something like this. So if we draw this and we're looking at it from the side view perspective, we would get something like this where we have a cone. And this radius here, whoops, and this extends out this radius would be 35. So what do we do? Well here we need to compute the volume of this cone, right? So we know that the height of this cone would have to be 7, right? Because 7 minus 0 is 7. And we know that the radius has to be 35. But what if this was a harder problem? How would we compute this? What if it didn't start at the vertex of the cone? Well, here's where we use something called the washer method. The washer method says that the volume is equal to pi times the integral from a to b, in this case, 0 to 7, of f of x squared. Here, f of x is equal to 5x. That's the only equation that we have, 5x squared. So, and this only works, the washer method only works when we're revolving something around the x-axis. So we revolve this function around the x-axis. So that's why we have this square part. Whatever function we're revolving around the x-axis, we square that and that becomes our integrand. So now this would be the volume of is equal to pi 
from 0 to 7 of 5x squared would be 5x squared would be 25x squared which would be the volume which would mean that the volume is pi pi times the integral of 25x squared is 25 over 3x cubed from 0 to 7. We know that when we plug 0 in, we're just going to get 0 because it's going to be a factor. And we know anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So all we have to do is just to plug 7 in, and that will be our answer. So the volume is equal to pi is equal to pi times 25 thirds times 7 cubed. So using the washer method, we got the volume of this cone that we figured out. But now let's check if this is correct. So in most cases, you can't check whether this is correct. However, in this case, we know that we have a cone. And we know the formula for the volume of the cone, which is 1 third pi r, pi r, pi r squared times h. Yeah, I sort of forgot that for a second. Um, so let's erase this and compute the volume and see if they're the same. So the volume of this cone would have to be, so we remember the formula is V is equal to 1 third pi r squared h. So the volume in this example would have to be equal to 1 third pi times 7 squared times 35, or sorry, not 7 squared, the radius is 35 squared, 35 squared times 7. So how is this equal to this value here? Well, let's manipulate this answer here. So let's say that 35 is equal to 7 times 5. So this would be equal to 1 third pi times 7 times 5, 7 times 5, squared times 7. So this would be equal to so we know that whenever we're multiplying something and then squaring whatever we get, we would, th that would be equal to this to the this power times this to this power. So this would be equal to 7 squared times 5 squared, which would be 25 thirds pi, because we know 5 squared is 25, multiplied by 1 third pi is 25 thirds pi times 7 now here we have 7 squared, but we're also multiplying with 7. So this could be this would be written as 7 cubed. So the volume of the cone is 25 thirds pi times 7 cubed. Here we have the volume is equal to pi times 25 thirds times 7 cubed. So the answers are the same. But remember, in most cases, you can't check the answer because it's not the full figure. And it's not a figure that you know the volume of a lot of times. Today we learned about solids of, revolu of revolutions. Thank you for watching this video.